Now, let's take a look at uh, Mr. Ken who uh, leads uh, the finance uh, ministry, and then the uh, vice president, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bamia, who heads the economic management team. And uh, uh, the people who are cabinet ministers and the kind of thinking that went into picking them, because you can see a lot of them have either economics or accounting background. Now, what are the tasks that immediately faces these persons who have this uh, uh, heavy burden on their shoulders? I think that immediately what they should be looking at is trying to reduce interest rates. Interest rates are still so high. The cost of borrowing is still so high. Businessmen cannot go and borrow the money because the market was already overcrowded by government. Money meant for private sector was being taken by government. You understand? And how, do, how would the private sector grow? If, if money meant for them is taken by government. Mm. And when you go and borrow money, the interest rate itself is just a, a disincentive to take the money. How do you go and take, in, take a loan when the interest is about 35%, you know, 32%, 33%, 35%? I mean, how? How can you work and pay after taking your cost of production and all your, all your inputs? How are you going to pay? You know, how are you going to pay? You can't. So there should be a conscious effort for, you know, for fiscal discipline in government, in government circles. So that the way we, you know, in the past, budget is overrun, especially in election year and other things. And then by the time you, you are aware, you know, the government now is now trying to still borrow and borrow and borrow from the private, from, from the banks, the commercial banks. I don't think it's proper. So they should take a conscious effort that all these things, the discipline, proper discipline, and allow the private sector, because don't forget, Nana has promised that he wants to lead a government that the engine of growth be the private sector. So the private sector must be able to grow so they can employ. They have to grow to employ. Mm. If they cannot employ, then it means <laughs> all that we are doing, we are wasting our time. They have to be able to employ. People must get employment in a private sector and get paid well in the private sector so they can take care of their families. And once people are employed and they can, they can, they can, they can get their daily bread back and forth, no, no. The, the thinking of the republic is finished. Because you see, if you go to some, some other jurisdictions, they try and make sure you have your employment. Mm. They try and make sure if those who are who are unemployed, they have certain social benefits, what they, what they call you know income support. Right. Okay? Now, for those who are highly marginalized, they get income, income support, and then they get, they get child benefits for their children. Okay? They get even housing support. So that once they have these things done, the pressure on them reduces. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see how, in any serious development economy, the government cannot ensure that these things are done to ensure that the, the, the citizens themselves have a way to have peace of mind. If people are okay, nobody will go and start a radio station to make noise and incite people and say that we are chasing people to go and take a, a tow boot and all these things. I mean, all these things are not, they are not correct. They are not correct. If people are employed, whether skilled or unskilled, in the specified areas that they can be employed, mm. I think that the pressure on the on the on the, on the republic will be, will, be, will be less, and that will be done only when we are able to empower the private sector to expand and employ. I see. Then Mr. Kenofera talks about the, this issue of uh, taxes that government says it will reduce them. Indeed, yesterday when he uh, he spoke to media houses, he, he reiterated it and said, indeed, government will, will, will cut down on certain taxes. Mr. Osafuma for himself has said that uh, sometimes when taxes becomes too punitive, you find people dodging. But the, the critics of this government have said that you cut these taxes. How do you get revenue to, to do all these beautiful ideas you've told us? One district, one million, and all that. You see, don't forget, one district, one factory will be fashioned by the private sector. There are people who are more than willing, as we speak now, mm. who are willing to bring in money to, invest in, to make those investments. That, invest, that money is not coming from government circles. Right, to get the point I'm saying. Right. One district, one factory is not coming from government circles. There are people who have lined up, who are willing and determined to bring their money to invest in those areas to employ. It's not government money. But it's the government broad vision. That is what I want to do for my people. I want people to be employed. I want people to get jobs to do. You understand? But then the private sector will fashion out that government agenda to ensure that that system or that, that, that uh, policy 
becomes it comes into fruition. So the money is not coming from uh, government. No, 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 no. But the one million, uh, one uh, million dollar is from government. That is from government. That's from government. But the bottom line that you must all know, right, is that if you look at the money being perfect, if you look at the money which are which which are going left and right, those corruption monies. So the loopholes. If the government is able to block the loopholes, I'm telling you, a lot of money will be there for there for the kitty. That is the reason why I'm saying, and Nana keeps saying that if you are coming to my government to come and come and look for private gains or financial reward for yourself, then stay out. Then stay out. So it means that you are coming to serve. You are coming in to come and serve the people. Mm. And therefore you must you are going to rely basically on whatever the public is giving you. Not that you are coming and then when the contract is, is, is uh, one million Ghana cities, you will say the contract is, is, is nine million Ghana cities. And then you and then and, and then that the, the extra money comes into your, your private pocket and the public is, is being hemorrhaged the public money is being hemorrhaged that is not how we want to go that's not how we want to go so at the end of the day if all these things are blocked there'll be a lot of money to finance all this all this uh, you know fine and uh, fantastic ideas. and the taxes will go down too the taxes have to go down you see let us not forget that if you are taxed and taxed and overtaxed. You get tired. We are we are we are running private business. We know how it works out. Mm. The tax man is always at your at, at your doorsteps. Today is this. The next day is that. The next day is that. Same people are being taxed. The same people are being taxed here and there because that's so easy to tax them. You understand? And, you know. So so the, the the easiest way for government to make money is to increase taxes. Eh? So, uh, and, that, and that is also making business, you know, uh, you know, difficult. For instance, we have had uh, most our friends from Guta and uh, our friends from, uh, the, you know, the, the, the Guta and the rest who are bringing things. Right. That the poor taxes that they have been are imposed on them have been too much. And the question is, who bears these taxes? The final consumer is the one who bears the taxes. Because no businessman Right, no businessman will bring in things, and then when the government tax a businessman X amount of money, they will say, Well, they will not push that, that uh, 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 expenditure into the final consumer. They will do so. The reason simple is that they, they, are, they are doing business, they are not doing for the Christmas, they are doing business. So, when the government pushes so much tax on them, you will make the citizens suffer the more. That's what people are complaining. Mm. So, if at the end there's some, some, some of the taxes which the Baumiadins are saying that, that they, they, they are nuisance taxes. If those taxes are removed, or we reduce the barriers minimum, we stimulate business, we stimulate growth. So the man knows that, well, if I bring in these things now with this kind of money, before I was paying X amount of money as taxes or even as import duties, now I don't pay that much, I pay less. So you have saved the man a huge chunk of money. And that man can use that money to bring in more. And the person who is not a final consumer will now be paying less because when they go to the market and say the price is now uh, 100 Ghana cities instead of before 150 Ghana or 200 Ghana cities, obviously you'll be happy. If you go to buy a jacket and the jacket before was uh, 1,000 Ghana cities mm -hmm. and they say the jacket is now 500 Ghana cities, you can buy two jackets instead of buying one jacket. You know, so I think that basically some of all these things is to enable us the ordinary man who we are in the system to also enjoy living in our country you should enjoy living in our country you should enjoy so at the end of the day i think that all those taxes here they say well how do you get the money the goodwill even the goodwill of of this government made people in a, in, a, in a makola and other places and reduce their the, the, the price of their items even though even though i thought they were reducing the, the, those prices mm. there had not been any reduction in taxes but they said, I was so kind, all that. They said, no. Now they have seen that good tidings are coming. Good things are on the way. They believe that another can deliver. And therefore, as a matter of goodwill, a matter of good gesture, they have reduced their items. And it was reduced. It was reduced. So we think that uh, we, we, we want this good to sustain. Mm. All government promises should be, should be adhered to. Anybody appointed to government position should live within the broad range of the policy of the president, the vision of the president, to ensure that at the end of the day, at the end of the four-year mandate, they will say that, oh, Nana Adodan Kwaku the president, 
has delivered on the manifesto promises. And therefore, Ghanaian will say, Nana, sabre bim. Nana, come again. You understand? But if Nana is not going to deliver, then the problem will not come. That's the reason why he has said, I'm bringing you men and women who can deliver on my promises. So it's, 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 not, it's not business, business as, as usual. I am grateful. The Daily Statesman uh, talks about NPP charges police over miscreants. Uh, the Acting General Secretary of the NPP, John Boyd, has asked the police to arrest and prosecute any group of persons caught engaged in vandalizing state property since the party has not asked or taxed anyone to do so. Mr. Buedu, who spoke uh, in a telephone interview to the paper, uh, said that we have not sanctioned or approved of any member of our party to take the law um, of our country in his or her hands. We disapprove and condemn it. Now, this uh, comment from Mr. Buedu is as a result of what we've been seeing about uh, some uh, youth uh, purportedly told to be NPP supporters uh, going around uh, trying to take over certain um, facilities. Uh, Gary, let's start from here. Um, uh, has this statement come too late from the NPP? Well, Brian, let me say that, uh, um, you know, there has been earlier communication uh, in respect of this matter, hmm. I think, by the, the youth organizer, Samia Oku. Right. Uh, that people who are doing that should quickly disengage themselves from this illegal, unlawful conduct. You see, uh, uh, it is saddening to hear that some purported alleged members of the party. Uh, you see, when you're a lawyer, you are careful. Right. Because they say they are members of the party. You do not know whether they, they, they are card bearing members of the party, whether they are sympathizers of the party. Whether they are criminals who have clothed themselves, you know, in party colors and say they are doing that sort of thing, and then giving the party a bad name, mm. and these people have also not been arrested. The police were told has picked uh, two persons from the passport office. Yes. Then they have to pick them. You mm. see, MPP is a party of rule of law. Nobody in the party will endorse a behavior that you can get up in your in your house in the morning and say. You go to a passport office and go and tell uh, uh, the, the right of that of passport, Mr. Grant, to vacate his post. Why? Or you go to a toll booth, and when people are collecting toll for the republic, and the money is not for their personal benefit, right? It's for the republic, and the money is backed by law, by the act of parliament to collect the money, the tolls, and then you go and you go and seize the toll booth. You see. It is difficult now because now I don't know whether these people have been verified that they are actually party members. But nobody can sanction anybody and nobody has sanctioned anybody. To Mr. Engage. Kuku has said that those he met at the passport office were indeed party supporters. Well, if, if Aoku has said that, I'll confirm from Aoku when I leave here. Mm. But if it is true, then all those boys should be desist immediately from such conduct. Because you see, it is not something that even the president will sanction. The president will never sanction any party member to go and rampaging, seizing anything, or removing anybody from post. No. There's a procedure for doing that. If somebody is a DCE, or somebody is an MCE, or somebody is a whatever, whatever it is, or man in a post, or whatever, there's a procedure for, 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 for transition. Mm. So I do not know how you can arrogate your, your power to your own self and move into those areas and say, that, well, I'm going to do it. Yes. In the past, we witnessed NDC people do that kind of bit, do that kind of thing. They went and they were seizing, you know, uh, 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 toilets and then seizing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, these uh, uh, post and all these things. But does it mean that if what they did and we condemn that behavior as being an illegal behavior, mm -hmm. a behavior unwarranted by law, then people should go and repeat the same mistakes? No, I don't think so. What somebody did, which was, which was wrong yesterday, you don't go and repeat the same mistake today. So I think that what uh, the general secretary is saying is a step in the right direction. Mm. If anybody is engaged in that behavior or that conduct, the person ought to be immediately arrested, taken to court, and prosecuted. If they are taken to court and any legal services, they will pay for lawyers. Then they will see that no. You see, when when people behave in such behavior, in such conducts, and then you don't punish them. 
it becomes the order of the day. That, oh, when it was a 10, we did it. So our 10, we are doing it. Is that, is that it for that sort of thing? That is not bringing discipline in public life. That is not, that is not the, what the president said. He said, bringing discipline in public life doesn't mean that we're still, or we're illegally going to seize somebody's uh, public asset in this manner. It's not discipline, it's indiscipline. So that behavior, we condemn it. If the MPP members in the, uh, they are found, they should be sanctioned. Some have said that the parties have not been tough on these supporters, tough enough to you deter see, them you from see, engaging. Right, the difficulty is that, the difficulty is that, it's not the party being tough. Party leadership is at the asylum down. Okay? Maybe these boys, if indeed they are party boys, and now I'm just saying if, 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 because now like, you're not sure if I'm they are not sure party, whether they are indeed party, party boys. Now, if these people are indeed party boys, and the party leadership, they are in a asylum down. Okay? And you can hear somebody maybe in a shaman. They go and do something in a shaman, organize themselves quietly and do something. At that time, you may not even, even be aware. By the time you hear of it, they've gone there and that thing is already done. You see? So it is, and the party is not police. Mm. The party is not police. You get the point. How would the party, uh, like Jobodu uh, or Aoku, go and arrest these people and say, what you are doing, we have I've come to arrest you? They can't speak to them to stop? They can't let them stop. Even but before the, the swearing in, there were hints of uh, some party supporters suggesting that they would take over certain facilities as soon as uh, the new president, now president, is sworn in. Well, so perhaps what, it might what, have come to the that's, that's why I'm saying that. That's why I'm saying that. If you know, yes, you may, you may, you may belong to a group. Everybody has got this idea in being the group, and you know, uh, there are all sorts of opinions and views, mm. uh, different levels of education, different levels of thinking. You know, I think that basically, if anybody has an intention of pursuing this path, they are rather giving the president a very bad name. Because the president is not somebody who will endorse this conduct. So he hates the party. He uh, hates the guy. Exactly. You know, he, because, so he, because he will not endorse this thing. He will not endorse this thing. That, oh, you, got, you guys can go and seize tow boot or stick over government, government departments or agencies in this in the manner they are doing. How should the police deal with this? I have spoken to a policeman who says, look, I want to go in there and stop this behavior. But I don't want to be the next day transferred to a remote village. So, uh, I, I, see, I, I if, the, if the policeman is saying that, then I will call it a, a derelation of duty. That's what I'll call it. That is not a practical thing on the ground. You see, you see, you see. We have to move to a stage where <clears throat> we have to insulate professional police services from these policies. It is because sometimes the way some of them may have compromised themselves in the manner that they do their work. Why should a policeman say that because I'm doing my duty dutifully, mm. professionally, as a policeman, and I've not offended anybody, I'll be transferred to a remote area and not be made to be in my post? You see, why? That means what you are saying, you are saying that invariably the party is giving a tacit endorsement of that behavior. And I'm saying that that behavior has no endorsement in any official circles. No. So the policeman must move in and do his work by arresting these people and put them before court. Because if you put them before court, then if they have an, an, an endorsement from party, let the party bring party lawyers to come and defend them. There you will see that in fact, Party lawyers are defending these boys and say, ah, voila, these people, in fact and indeed, were being supported by the party, but in a very covert manner. It is not true. No party has sanctioned that anybody can go and do rampaging or do anything. You should, you should arrest them. Mm. If you arrest them, they will not find anybody in the party, lawyer, lawyers in the party, to come and defend these cases. They will hire lawyers outside and pay them. And if you can pay legal services, then that's fine for them. You see, we should discourage this kind of behavior and make our society a very decent society where when there's a transition, one party goes, another party comes. You see, the manner in which President Mahama left office, it was so nice. In fact, I have to commend him. The manner that he considered, the manner that he, the, 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 the program went, mm. and everything was so smooth. We are not seeing the way it's going like Gambia. 
where the man has considered defeat in one breath, <laughs> and another breath he says that no, I have not, I will not concede again, and that now I'm going to the Supreme Court, having considered defeat, and having I have call your op opponent to congratulate him, and in, in, in open and uh, broad daylight with cameras on you, oh, right. they say no, now I've changed my mind. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's so farcical. It's so farcical. I mean, it smacks, it smacks, you know, that this guy is not, it's just not correct. Mm. You understand? But we didn't have it like that here. We have had a very pretty transition. And I will have hope and expect that uh, all these minor, minor things that are trying to give the government a bad name, they will not even okay at all. Mm. In fact, if you are a full soldier or you are a party person and you think that you want some of the job to do, you wait. You go and see your people who are in charge. Mm. You make an application. That well, I also, I also want to do the job. If there's a vacancy, they'll give you give you give you the job. Don't forget that the people who are there, whether they are NDC or whatever, PPP or uh, uh, PFP, they're also Ghanaians. Okay. And Ronaldo is not president for MPP. All right. He's president for the people of Ghana. Okay. You understand that thing? So you cannot say that because the man is NDC. Or you, you perceive the NDC, you want to remove him. No, you can't do that. Gary. Thanks so right. much for joining me this morning. You're welcome, right? He's a member. Gary Namaku is a member of the NPP's communication team and a legal practitioner. I'm grateful for your time. Great Wednesday to you and hope to see you some other time. Thank you. All right.